You know what? The Netherlands deserves a resilience Nobel, and I can prove it. Exhibit A. About a quarter of the country is below sea level, and half of it sits just 3 feet above. The highest point down south only reaches about 1,000 feet. That's like the height of the Eiffel Tower. Exhibit B. It's the seventh lowest country on the planet and one of the most densely populated. Nearly 4 million people live below sea level. And yet, they're totally fine. No scuba gear needed to get to work. Exhibit C. It's located right next to the North Sea, with massive rivers pouring into it from all over Europe. The Rhine, the Meuse, and the Scheldt rivers, all of them empty into the sea through the Netherlands. Now, with all that going on, this country should be under the ocean by now. And yet, it's not. In fact, they're not just staying afloat, they are expanding. But how? Well, I'm going to tell you. This is what the Netherlands looks like today. But this is what it looked like back in the 14th century. Now compare these two, and you'll see that most of the land we see now used to be underwater. Take Schiphol Airport. It's the fourth busiest in Europe and probably the one you flew into if you've ever been to Amsterdam. It was built on what used to be a lake, the Harlemmer Lake to be exact. But they drained it back in 1852, and now the airport sits over 13 feet below sea level. This isn't an isolated case, though. For the past 2,000 years, people there have been fighting tirelessly to push the ocean back and keep the water out of the land. They started by building things like canals, huge winding waterways that channel excess water away from low-lying areas. And then there are the windmills. Yep, I'm talking about those classic cute Dutch windmills that are a tourist landmark. But they're not just for pictures. These things actually use wind power to pump water out during heavy rains or floods, sending it into the right channels where it can be safely drained. Most people in the Netherlands also depend on dikes to keep the water at bay. These massive barriers act like the country's giant walls, stopping water from flooding into the land. But if something goes wrong, like if the water rises higher than the dike, or the dike gets damaged, then people living nearby are in serious danger. But hey, at least their wooden shoes would float. Oops, never mind. But for now, let's say the rewards totally make the risks worth it. I mean, thanks to all these efforts over centuries, the Dutch have managed to reclaim 20% of their land from the sea. The biggest difference is wonderfully clear in Rotterdam. What started as a small settlement along a peat river back in the 14th century is now a city with the largest seaport in Europe. Check out this whole section here. This piece of land, for example, was added in just four years. So, how did they make land out of nothing? Well, in this case, they used these huge dredging ships, the same kind they used to build those insane palm islands in Dubai. These ships suck up sand from the ocean floor like a giant vacuum cleaner and then spray it onto certain areas to create new land. Once they had enough sand piled up and shaped just the way they wanted, they had to make sure it wouldn't get washed away by the sea again. So they brought in around 20,000 massive stone blocks and placed them all around the edges, like building a giant protective wall. No doubt the Netherlands is one of Europe's most innovative countries when it comes to tackling rising waters. One of their biggest successes is probably the Maze Lawn Curring, a storm surge barrier in South Holland. This engineering marvel was built in the 90s with one goal in mind – to take the full brunt of tidal surges from the sea. So whenever the water is expected to rise 10 feet or more, this barrier automatically closes. And just like that, it protects 1.5 million people. That doesn't mean it closes all the time, though. In fact, it's pretty rare. In 25 years, this barrier has only closed twice. But with ocean waters rising twice as fast now as they did in the 20th century, experts think this barrier is going to be closing a lot more often in the future. The good news is, it's built to keep protecting the country for the next 100 years. And it can handle a 16-foot rise in ocean water before they will even need to think about making any major changes. Ok, we get it. The Netherlands is doing an awesome job keeping the water out. But what if, one day, they just can't handle it anymore and end up flooded? What could things look like by the year 2100, for example? Well, this is how much of the country could be underwater in a worst-case scenario. It would push people to move further inland, 
more to the east and south of the country. That would be a huge challenge, though. If that happened today, authorities would have to squeeze over 18 million people into a much smaller area. So they'd have to think up some serious urban solutions. Those cute, cozy little Dutch houses, you know the ones with two or three floors, would be replaced by massive skyscrapers just to fit everyone in. So farming might go vertical. People would start growing food in tall buildings instead of sprawling fields. And most every rooftop would have some kind of green space, like a garden or a park, so people can still enjoy nature even if they're stuck in the middle of a busy city. To protect historic buildings, places like Amsterdam would have huge raised dikes surrounding them. But even with all that, life would still change big time. People wouldn't really live on the ground floor anymore since it would be too risky with the flooding. Those lower levels would stay empty and they would start building new rooms or living spaces up top. They'd also be raised walkways connecting everything, kind of like a whole new ground level in the sky. Boats and small water transport would become normal for getting around. And experts even think we'd still have super-fast trains running through big dikes to connect all the cities. So yeah, even in a crazy apocalyptic scenario, the Netherlands would still survive a massive flood. They just need to adapt. But what's fascinating is that water isn't just something the Dutch fight against. It's also something they completely rely on, especially when it comes to business and trade. Because the Netherlands sits right on the North Sea and has all these rivers, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, remember? It became this natural hub for shipping and trading centuries ago. It's like Europe's gateway for goods. And since the Netherlands is the world's second largest exporter of foods and agricultural products by value, that's critical for them. Take the port of Rotterdam, for example. It is huge one of the biggest and busiest ports in the world and easily the largest in Europe. It's like the ultimate pit stop for cargo ships coming in and out of the continent. So much stuff moves through there – containers, oil, cars, food, you name it. Water makes it super easy to move things around, not just within the Netherlands, but to places like Germany, Belgium, and France too. Barges on the rivers are essentially the Dutch version of 18-wheeler trucks. So yeah, while they've worked hard to keep the water out, they've also made it work for them economically in a big way. Now, let's talk about Dutch chocolate! Wait, I've run out of time, maybe later, bye for now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.